Our respect and honor are delivered to Mrs. Annie Tecklerburn, RNMSN. We would like to welcome you to program Studi Diploma 3 Keperawatan Trenggalek, Poltekas Kemenkes Malang, Ischelva, Indonesia. And we were looking forward to hearing your insightful sharing regarding the home care after a stroke. The deepest respect is also delivered to the director, deputy director, head of study program of Prodi Diplomatiga Keperawatan Trenggalek, Poltekas Kemenkes Malang, and all participants. First of all, the feeling of gratitude and blessing are always devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty God who has given us his blessing that we can join a virtual international guest lecture in acute state of health. Amin, 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 ya robbal alamin. Dear participants, today we are going to have a guest lecture with the theme Home Care After a Stroke. Please sit back and relax to listen and pay attention to the keynote speaker for a couple of hours ahead. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's start our agenda today by saying Basmalah together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Next, Singing National Anthem Indonesia Raya and Hymne Poltekas Kemenkes Malang. Please sit up right. For the next is singing hymna Poltekas Kemenkes Malang.
Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have a welcome speech from the Head of Study Program of Prodi Diploma Tiga Keperawatan Trenggalek, Ibu Nasrahayu Nining Asi, Eskop MKS. The time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Special greeting to Mrs. Annie T. Tekloben, RN, MSN. Welcome to the nursing, nursing study program of Trenggana Health Polytechnic of Malang, East Java, Indonesia. Bapak Ibu, segenap dosen, tenaga kependidikan, and all the students of Prodi D3 Keperawatan Kampus Kabupaten Trenggana. Puji syukur garet Allah Subhanahu wa taala siang hari ini kita bisa menyelenggarakan kegiatan kuliah tamu ya tidak berlebihan kiranya kita senantiasa memanjatkan Rasa syukur kehadirat Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala dengan penuh harap kebaikan. On behalf of the Head Polytechnic of Malang, Mrs. Eni, I would like to say thank you so much for your time to share update information and knowledge with us. The student of nursing about nursing care for stroke patients. We are really happy and looking forward to hearing your lecture. We hope through this international guest lecture, the student will find something useful and beneficial for their career, especially in the context of home care for stroke patients. Well, you know the Indonesian government is fighting against non-infectious disease. One of them is stroke. Through the application of Aplikasi Sehat Indonesia Ku, in short, ASIC, Healthcare provider record to the data on non-infectious disease so that the government can decide to, let's say, dealing with the problems. In addition, we have one technique to recognize stroke at an early stage, namely be fast, standing for balance, eye problems, face dropping, arm weakness, and time to seek medical help. This is in line with our vision to be excellent in caring for stroke patients. Sering sekali kami uh, menghadirkan narasumber dalam rangka memujudkan visi keilmuan keperawatan stroke salah satunya adalah kegiatan kuliah tamu dengan tema keperawatan stroke saat ini kami sangat berharap nanti ada gambaran home care yang dilaksanakan barangkali di negara Filipina asal dari eh, narasumber internasional saat ini dengan penuh harap kami bisa mendapatkan tambahan wawasan bagaimana khususnya home care ketika pasien post-stroke pulang dari rumah sakit. Kurang lebihnya seperti itu, mohon nanti Bu Yuyun bisa mentranslate apa yang saya inginkan, permohonan supaya kami semua nanti bisa mendapatkan gambaran keperawatan stroke 
home care terutama ketika pasien sudah keluar dari rumah sakit. Well, that's why we would like to know more from uh, Mrs. Anity Tekloben RN MSN about stroke. Once again, thank you so much and it's very nice to meet you. Terima kasih kembali kembali. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Thank you, Mrs. Rahayu, for delivering the welcoming speech. Well, all participants, we are coming to the core of the guest lecture. I would like to welcome the moderator of the international webinar, Ibu Yuyun Putri Mandasari MPD, one of the lecturer of Poltekas Kemenkes Malang. The screen is yours. Thank you very much, Devira. Oh, well, good afternoon, Mrs. Annie. It's very nice uh, to meet you virtually in this event of International Guest Lecture. On behalf of Prodi Dedika Keperawatan Kampus Kabupaten Trenggalek, Poltekes Kemenkes Malang, East Java, Indonesia, I would like to welcome you to the International Guest Lecture today. Uh, I think it's such a very great honor for us and also especially for me to become the moderator of yours, the outstanding and the keynote speaker of the day. Uh, by the way, how are you, Miss Annie? Everything is going all right? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. That's really great. Uh, by the way, uh, what time is it now? In Indonesia right now is uh, 2.14. PM. I think we are ahead one hour from Indonesia, ma'am. So it's oh, three fourteen PM here. Okay, I see. So, yes. uh, I hope the weather outside is getting uh shiny bright today. So, and we are ready to listen to all your materials regarding the topic today, the theme of international guest lecture, home care for post stroke patients. Uh, Ibu Rahayu Niningasi has a message, has an expectation, and also hope that through this international guest lecture, maybe you can share with us, with all the students, about how to be the, maybe in the nurse, or maybe to have a treatment at home, especially for the patient of stroke, uh, of stroke, something like that. So maybe the hard skill, maybe not only the hard skill, maybe also the soft skill to care for the pa uh, the stroke patient. Well, all right, Miss uh, Annie. Uh, well, Miss Annie, before we start our guest lecture today, allow me to read your awesome curriculum vitae first. Let me share my screen with you. Okay, well, here we go. Uh, Miss Annie Tagloban RN MSN is a clinical educator. She is coming from Philippines, especially she is a Master of Science in Nursing at San Paul University, Philippines. Her educational background, she has got her Bachelor of Science in Nursing uh, at San Paul University in 2003, and then her Master of Science in Nursing in in 2020. Now let me tell you all about her working experiences. Since 2003 to 2007, she was the charge nurse in the operating room at San Paul Hospital Incorporated Philippines. And then as a staff nurse in ICU at Rabu General Hospital Kingdom of Saudi Arabia uh, in 2000 until 2009. And then as an EPA nurse in Aso Izuka Hospital, Fukuoka, Japan, 
in uh, until 2012 and then as a staff nurse in the emergency room at San Paul Hospital in Corporated Philippines 2012 to 2014 and then as a church nurse in the operating room at Divine Mercy Wellness Center Philippines 2015 2019 and then right now since January 2020 until now she is a clinical instructor at São Paulo University of Philippines. Well, I think uh, it is the curriculum today of Miss Annie. It's really, really awesome, I think. And we are looking forward for hearing your insightful material regarding the theme, home care of stroke, post-stroke patient. Well, Mrs. Annie and also the participants today in this international guest lecture, we have two sessions. The first session is the delivery material uh, from the keynote speaker. And then the second session will be the question and answer session. For the participants who want to ask for a question, you can directly raise up your hands or maybe you want to type the question on the meeting chat. Well, okay. Now, please welcome Miss Annie Taoban, and the screen is yours. Thank you so much, Ma'am Yuyun Putri and Ma'am uh, Rahayu for this opportunity. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as Ma'am Yuyun said a while ago, I am Annie Takloban, and I'm a Filipina operating room nurse for almost eight, uh, eight years. So and then I joined I joined the um university for the academy. So it's it is an honor for me to be with you this afternoon as your guest lecturer for the topic home care for stroke patient. So once again I thank you CDC and International Affairs Polytechnic Health Ministry of Malang to all the faculty and staff and especially to the participants, once again, thank you for this great opportunity. Yes, it's our pleasure. Okay. So, can I present my slide? Yes, of course, ma'am. The time thank is yours. You. Are you seeing my slide now? Can you see my screen? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe. Oh. Oh, wait. A I'm minute. sorry for that. Yeah. Maybe you have to open the file first. I think or. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Wait. Again, it's not working. Is, is it not working, Miss Annie? Yeah, wait. Oh, wait. Okay, wait, uh, wait a minute. I think I'll ask for some help. Wait a minute, ma'am. Or okay. maybe uh, would you please share your, mater uh, your material? I can't. Oh, I, oh, okay, yeah. is it working right now? Yeah. It's working. Right I now. think. Um, okay, okay, so. Yeah, good. It's clear now. Now, can you see my screen? Okay. Yes, of course. So, um, so before we talk about the home care for post-stroke patients, we have a lot of um objectives or things to discuss here. So, the objectives for this lecture will be at the end of this lecture, the participants will be able to, of course, number one, understand the effects of stroke. And then number two, familiarize with the different strategies in reducing stroke and preventing its recurrence. And number three, prepare to care for a post-stroke patient. And of course, number four, to promote recovery of post-op patients or post-stroke patients. So in order to understand a uh, um, in order for us to render an appropriate care for the patients, 
with stroke or post-stroke, we need to understand the brief concept of human anatomy brain. So we all know that brain is the most complex organ in the body where it controls both sensory and motor functions. So, and of course, the human brain is responsible for thinking, right? Remembering, understanding, planning, reasoning, and problem solving. So I hope uh, the nursing students here can really um, apply or uh, see the concept that you are um, reading in your lectures, right? Okay, so as we go further, we also need to know a brief concept about stroke. So again, uh, this is to lead us in the appropriate care and management for the disease. So what is stroke? A stroke is the disease that affects the, the arteries of the brain. And of course, it occurs when a blood vessel bringing blood to the brain gets blocked or rupture or we say that bursting of the uh, vein or artery, okay? And uh, the affected part of the brain doesn't get the oxygen and nutrients it needs, causing the brain cells to die. And then brain injury from stroke can affect any of the following functions. Again, like what I've said a while ago, the ability to move, ability to feel, think, and as well as behave. So a stroke is a medical emergency, so immediate treatment may minimize the long-term effect of a stroke and even uh, prevent death. So as you've seen in the slide, the stroke is a serious medical condition that occurs when blood supply to the other part of the brain is interrupted or reduced, right? So causing, as what it, it says there, causing brain cells death, affecting to the other functions. So uh, how can we care for a certain patient, a post-stroke patient, if we do not know the root cause of it, right? Okay, so the next slide um, are some facts that link other health conditions, the modifiable and the non-modifiable factors to obtain or developing stroke according to American Stroke Association. So let's start with the stroke as a back brain attack, okay? And then, um, although stroke is common after age of 55, we all know that it can also happen at any age, at any time, right? Even uh, actually the case rate for stroke for the young is uh, increasing as of this day, okay? And another, the leading cause of adult disability, uh, some people who have a stroke will make a full recovery. However, so more than two thirds of the survival will have some type of disability. So uh, that it means that it, that depends on the site of the ruptured vein or the stroke, okay? So every 40 seconds, someone in the United States has a stroke. Actually, not only in the United States, it also in, includes us here in the Philippines and as well as in Indonesia, right? So it says there, 2 million brain cells die every minute during a stroke. So that is why we need to act fast okay so another these are the uh heart and this uh, heart disease and stroke statistics update these are conditions that contribute to having a stroke so as you can see over there that is a diabetes Pre-diabetes, undiagnosed or diagnosed diabetes, it has a lot of contribution in developing a stroke as well as the cardiovascular diseases. See, in, in our slide, in the United States alone, it is, it's written there, according to their statistics, it is 224.4 per 1,000 people are having um, the death rate attributed to the cardiovascular disease and as well as the increasing in blood 
um, cholesterol for patients. That is why it, it is uh, written there, on average, someone in the United States, States die for cardiovascular disease in every 34 seconds. So imagine there are a lot of people who are having or who are experiencing stroke anytime due to these conditions. Okay. Another, uh, hypertension is also one of the culprit in having stroke, right? As well as um, uh, increasing or decreasing or if you, if you didn't sleep, that causes you or that will lead you to increasing potential for having a stroke. So imagine every one hour per night decrease in sleep is you have the chance of 6% higher for having a cardiovascular disease that will lead to stroke as well as if you lessen your sleep it's, or if you have a sleep, if you sleep for more than eight hours, like for example, eight to nine hours or 12 hours. So that will make you 12% higher risk of having a cardiovascular disease that will lead to, again, stroke. Okay? Okay. So next slide. So how is a stroke common? Um, a stroke has a large impact in, on society with more than 9 million stroke survivors in the United States. So it, every year, about 8,000 8, people in the United States have a stroke uh, with about 185 being recurrent. So if we do not know how to treat or manage the stroke later on, it will still have a recurrency, okay? And another one, if you can see here, uh, black people are twice as likely as white people to have a first time stroke. Why? Why do you think that black people has the higher chance of having stroke? Actually, yes, in the Philippines and in the in the Indonesia, we have a high risk of or uh, it is one of the leading cause of death, right? However, it says their black people are twice uh, as likely as white people to have the first time stroke. Because black people, according to the studies, black people are often uh, at a higher risk for stroke than other racial groups, largely because they are at higher risk for underlying conditions that can lead to stroke. So these conditions include high blood pressure or a hypertension, again, the diabetes, the obesity. However, their genetics and social factors also uh, uh, play me. a significant mm -hmm. role. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Am I too fast? Uh, no, I think a couple of seconds ago, uh, we cannot hear your voice, but right now it's working. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. So, uh, like what I've said a while ago, so the conditions include high blood pressure, diabetes, and obesity, and obesity. However, the genetics for the Black people and social factors also play an, a significant role. So for instance, a common variant uh, rear, the HNF1A gene has been tied to an increase in a stroke, uh, especially the people from Africa, or they have the African descent. What is HNF, by the way? It is a protein acts as a transcriptor factor, which means it at attaches or binds to specific regions of DNA that helps control the activity of certain genes and also responsible uh, or this uh, gene found in several tissues and organs and also especially important in our pancreas and in our liver. So the regulation of this gene activity um, 
is critical for the growth and development of beta cells in the pancreas, okay? And another variant, gene variant, is the PRA. So this is the uh, associate, associated with the platelet aggregation. So meaning uh, blood clots are more easily found and more commonly in black individuals than in white ones. Okay, so of course, social determinants. What do we have to do with the social determinants? Of course, uh, we need to see the factors like um, the access to quality of care and their dietary choices or the, their lifestyle habits. How is it? That is why it is they are prone or it is common in the black person. So, up to uh, take note of this up to 80% of stroke may be prevented with lifestyle changes okay so where is that lifestyle change be starting in ourselves within us it start it starts with our home our own community okay because if we prevent that to happen if our lifestyle is good actually the rate should not be increasing, okay? However, due to the foods maybe that we are eating, a lot of street foods, cholesterol and everything, that it's really a contributing factor to acquiring or having a stroke, right? So next, as what I've said a while ago, unfortunately, uh, Philippines and Indonesia. This is a statistical uh, data between the, the Indonesia and the Philippines that I've read. But unfortunately, really, it is indeed concerning that stroke is a leading cause of death and morbidity in both Philippines and Indonesia. So the prevalence of ischemic stroke, which means 70% of uh, cases highlights the importance of understanding and managing the risk. Okay, um, this include, of course, again, like what I've said a while ago, the blood pressure, the cholesterol, the smoking, diabetes, poor diet, lack of physical health, are also among others. So in Indonesia, um, the the Indonesian basic health. Research revealed that the prevalence of stroke in Indonesia is 12.1 per million with the highest number in uh, North Sulawesi province. Is that right until now? <laughs> so, yeah, actually, it's really alarming. Okay, so, but um, public health initiatives, they, the, the, the government already have the public initiative, health initiative, they are um, having programs to address this concern. Like they aim at education, the health education, the prevention and early detection. Of course, it can play a crucial role in reducing the incidence of stroke. And that, that can also include promoting healthy uh, life choices, providing access to regular checkups, especially in barrios or in a far-flung areas. So uh, they also ensure that those with conditions like high blood pressure and diabetes will help uh, the appropriate prevention measures, okay? By, uh, of course, um, completing the regimen or the, their medication regimen as their maintenance. Okay, so before we proceed with the uh, home care, of course, we should know what type of stroke would that be so that we know how to manage. So ischemic stroke, one of the type of strokes that we have. So ischemic stroke occurs when blood supply um to the brain is obstructed or we we say that ischemic right from the word root word ischemic it is obstructed so the main cause of this ischemic stroke is atherosclerosis or what we call the fatty depo deposits or the flap that line the vessel wall so the, these fatty deposits 
can cause two types of obstruction, of course. One is cerebral thrombosis and the other one is cerebral embolism. So when we say cerebral thrombosis, it is a thrombus or the blood clot that develops at the site of fatty plaque within a blood vessel that supplies blood to the brain. And uh, of course, Cerebral embolism is a blood clot that forms in the heart or large arteries, the bigger arteries in the upper chest or neck, or at another location in the circulatory system. So part of the blood clot breaks or loses, and then it enters the blood streams, and also it travels uh, through the brain's blood vessel until it reaches uh, vessels too small to let it pass. That is why it will be occluded like this on the picture, okay? So if, uh, see, if this is the uh, the artery, the, the, the aorta, and it reaches the smallest part of the blood vessel, and then it will occlude there, it will cause ischemic stroke, right? Okay, so, um, a main cause of embolism is an irregular heartbeat cold. That is why uh, if there is an atrial fibrillation, the, that causes this buildup of flux here causes the heart to shiver or what we say, what we call the atrial fibrillation. So this clot forms in the heart and dislodge and travel to the brain. Okay? So another... Oh, I'm sorry. Another is the hemorrhagic stroke. So why, what does it differ or how come the hemorrhagic stroke is also included there? So this occurs when weakened blood vessel ruptures. So the two types of weakened blood uh, vessel that usually cause hemorrhagic stroke are aneurysm and the um, arteriovenous malformation or the AVMs. And the most common cause of this hemorrhagic stroke is, of course, we all know that the uncontrolled hypertension. So if that hypertension is not addressed properly by the medication, by the doctor, by the patient, it will eventually rupture. Okay, so hemorrhagic stroke make up about 13% of stroke cases. So in ischemic stroke a while ago, it's about 87%. Now in the, the hemorrhagic stroke is about 13%. So they occur when a weakened blood vessel ruptures and bleeds into the surrounding brain. And then the blood accumulates and compresses the surrounding brain tissue. Okay? Uh, we also have the type of that hemorrhagic stroke intracerebral or inside the brain or the subarachnoid hemorrhage between the inner and outer layer of the tissue covering the brain. Okay? So uh, let's go back to the aneurysm and AVM, the arteriovenous malformation. So normally, uh, what is arteriovenous, mal uh, arteriovenous malformation? Normally, arteries carry blood containing oxygen from the heart to the brain and veins carry blood with less oxygen away to the brain and back to the heart. So when the arteriovenous malformation or the AVM occurs, a tangle of blood vessels in the brain bypasses normal brain tissue and directly diverts from the arteries to the brain. So that is the AVM. So how about the cerebral aneurysm? So in aneurysm, it is a weak area of the blood vessel that usually enlarges. So it often is described as ballooning, the ballooning of this ve blood vessel, also called brain aneurysm or intracranial aneurysm. So cerebral aneurysm can rupture causing bleeding within the brain or surrounding area. Okay?
So that is depends which part of the uh, brain is affected. The, the right or the left, we call that hemi, hemiplegic, right hemiplegic or left hemiplegic. Okay, so later on we'll discuss that. Another one is a uh, transient ischemic attack. Although there are only two types, the hemorrhagic and then ischemic stroke, we have the transient ischemic attack that is a temporary blockage of blood flow to the brain. So this clot usually dissolves on its own or get dislodged. And the symptoms usually less than five minutes. So TIA doesn't cause permanent damage. So we call it as a warning sign. So signaling a possible full-blown uh, stroke ahead. That is why trans transient ischemic attack. Okay? And then uh, when you first notice this, you, of course, uh, get help immediately even if sim symptoms away because if we let that pass maybe another time or uh, in due time it will be a full-blown hemorrhagic or um, ischemic attack okay I, I mean hemorrhagic attack so TIA's temporarily symptoms can last from only a few minutes after to 24 hours. That is why uh, making in, in the hospital, they are having they are they have they are having challenges in diagnosing these symptoms. The symptoms or the, the stroke symptoms that disappear in under an hour need emergency assessment to help prevent, of course, the full blown stroke. So it is really necessary again to be fast, to act fast. Because our time here is crucial, okay? So what are the risk factors for the transient ischemic attack? We have um, increased, increases with age. The TIA increases with age. Uh, of course, anyone can have it, as like what I've said a while ago, even the young. The, the, the rate of the stroke in the young is increasing nowadays. So stroke rates double every 10 years or after age 55. And previously, um, it really needs to, they really needs to uh, need to pay attention for the signs of TIA because that could be again, like well, like what I have said a while ago, it could be a signal for a second stroke, a bigger full-blown stroke. So what are the common signs or warning signs of uh, the TIA? We have this, what you call weakness, numbness, or paralysis on one side of your body, slurred speech, or difficulty understanding words, or it could be a blindness, blindness in one or both of your eyes. So it also... Um, includes dizziness with severe headache with no apparent cause. So if you think you have the symptoms, try to uh, be in the hospital right away to address this concern, okay? Again, major risk factors for the transient ischemic attack like what I've said a while ago, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, atrial fibrillation, and smoking. We also have another uh, type of stroke. This is what they call the cryptogenic stroke or stroke of unknown cause. Why unknown cause? Because they do not know what is exactly the main reason where it came from. Okay? So most blood clots that blocks of blood flow to the brain causes a stroke, but in this instance, the cause can't be determined. That is why it's called cryptogenic, okay? So about one in four stroke survivors will likely have another stroke. That is why it is really important uh, for a healthcare team or even in your houses, in, in the home settings, to uh, find the definitive diagnosis about that. 
Okay? So, what are the possible hidden causes of stroke? Again, it's the same. The atrial fibrillation, the irregular heartbeat, um, structure, heart structure problem or cardiac uh, conditions like the patent foramen ovale. That is also one of the reasons. Or the hardening of the arteries or the atherosclerosis and the blood clotting disorder. Okay? So, we already discussed about the types of the stroke. Okay. So, uh, now we differentiated the types of stroke. It must really, it, it is really a must for us to know the warning signs in order to know what to watch out for. Again, because it is an emergency threat, it can happen to anyone, any age, any time. So everyone needs to be aware of and act fast to increase the chance of survival. So in F, we have the face. So does one side of the face droop or it is, it is numb? So ask the person to smile. So if the person smiles uneven, of course, you should suspect that something is wrong. Maybe it's having a stroke. Okay? Letter A, the arms. So one arm weak or numb. So ask the person to raise both arms. So does one arm drift downward or not? So if the person cannot put their arms upward, something is wrong. Okay? Next is the speech. You ask the person to repeat a simple phrase. So if there's a problem, if there's a slurred speech or strange in their um, uh, speaking, that can also be a sign that the person is experiencing a stroke. Another is the time. So if you observe any of this, these signs, Again, this is lifted from the American uh, Stroke Association. That is why it is written there, call 911 immediately. However, in Indonesia, I guess it's call 118 or 119. Uh, we have PSJ. No, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Paedi, can you help me? Yeah. What is the phone number of our PS? C. Yes, C, Public Safety Center. Yes, Public Service Center. Mrs. Oh, Annie. What is the phone number, ma'am? 119 or 118? Emergency Medical System, baik itu kegawat daruratan medis yang penyakit maupun karena trauma kecelakaan. Yes, uh, uh, maybe Pak Edi can give me the uh, information about the phone number, 991 or maybe... Hi. Okay. The phone number. Nomor teleponnya Pak Edi? Iya, yeah, sama. 119. Oh, I see. 99... Uh, I'm sorry. 119. 119. So as well in the Philippines, we also have 119. But sometimes, you know, the signal here, the, the, the receptions of the phones cannot go through most of the time. That is why... Yeah, if something like this is happening, we really need to put ourselves or the patients in or the community people directly in the nearby hospitals or any healthcare setting. Okay? Yes, so that right. is why, yeah, it's really saddening. Maybe that is also one of the reasons why our incidence rates are higher both Indonesia and the Philippines compared to other Asian uh, countries, right? I, I don't yes. know, but that's that's what I am reading about. Okay, so time really, if you delay that, it could harm the patient. It will lead the patient death, okay? So that is why act fast or be fast. That is the the fast warning. So another, we also have other symptoms of the stroke. So we have here 
the numbness, like what I've said a while ago, numbness or weakness of the face, arm, or leg, especially on one side of the body. Another one is the confusion. If uh, a certain person has a trouble of speaking, and when you ask what is her, their name, and then they seem to be confused, maybe there is that is the sign for another stroke or trouble in seeing then walking through because they cannot lift their hands or their foot already that is why they have they have troubles uh, walking due to dizziness or loss of balance and coordination of course so another is the severe headache with no known cause okay so do not just um drink um pain medication if you experience headache try to know the reason why you are having such a headache okay we will never know another is the effects of uh the stroke so we are talking about the stroke a while ago like the right uh which which part of the brain is affected yeah, the brain is an extremely complex organ that controls various body functions. So if a stroke occurs and blood flow can reach the region that controls particular body function, that part of the body won't work as um, it should be. So if the stroke occurs toward the back of the brain, for instance, it's likely that some um disability involving vision will result because the, the, that is our occipital area so if that is affected okay and the effect of the stroke dependent primarily on the location of the obstruction and the extent of brain tissue affected so the effects of the stroke depend on several factors including the lo location of course and however, because of one side of the brain controls the opposite side of the body, a stroke affecting one side will result in neurological complication on the other side of the body it affects. Okay? Did you get that? So when if the left brain, okay, the left hemisphere, so the stroke occurs in the left side of the brain, the right side of the body will be affected. Okay, so if this has a stroke, the right side of the brain is affected. So this includes paralysis on the right side of the body, the speech, the, the language problem, uh, a slow, cautious, or behavioral style, or having memory loss. Okay. Now, if the, the right brain, if the stroke occurs in the right side of the brain, the left side of the body will be affected, producing some or all of the following, like the paralysis, the vision problem, and uh, inquisitive behavioral style, and also Another is a memory loss. So these are the effect, affected areas. You will have problems with music, spatial orientation, art awareness, creativity, creativity and insight. Okay? So uh, why do we need to know these things? So that we later on, when we care for patients in our home, in the community, or in the hospital, we know how to handle Okay, if the right, uh, the, the paralysis is that on the right area, are you going to put clothing on the right hand first or the le left hand first? Okay, so those will be our uh, discuss discussions further. Okay, so let's move on with the stroke risk factors. So like what we've said a while ago, these are the non-modifiable, the age, of course, the family. You cannot modify these things. The race, again, the black are greater than in, in the white ones, the gender. Then the prior stroke. If you have a history of a prior stroke or the transient ischemic attack, 
that will be another risk factor for you to have a stroke. So the modifiable risk factors includes the but not limited to the following, the hypertension, diabetes, the circulation problem or the cardiac problems, the atrial fibrillation. That's what we have uh, discussed a while ago, right? So in blood, uh, high blood pressure or hypertension, uh, when blood flow with too much force, putting more pressure on the arteries, the excess pressure stretches the arteries beyond the healthy limit. And that will cause a small tears. So the body then, the, the body's mechanism will kicks into an injury healing or injury healing mode to repair the tears. Um, with a scar tissue, of course, there will there will be scarring, but the scar tissue traps substances that uh, form plaques or the blood clots that can lead to blockage or clots and also hardens and weakens the artery, okay? So in diabetes, of course, I, I, I know that you already, you are familiar with the diabetes, but why? How come that diabetes is one? Of course, in connection with a stroke, to how the body handles blood glucose to make more energy. Most food we eat is broken down into glucose to give us energy, yes. Glucose enter a person's bloodstream and travels to cell through the body after food digest, yes. However, uh, over time, when excessive blood glucose increases uh, fatty deposits or clots in blood vessel, that will lead to stroke, okay? So remember that it, it's not only that you will be having the, the different complications of diabetes like neuropathy, nephropathy, but there is also a chance that once a person is diagnosed with diabetes, there is a higher chance to have a stroke, okay? Another is the circulation problem and the atrial fibrillation. So what is the atrial fibrillation? Again, as I've mentioned a while ago, it's the quivering or irregular heartbeat or rhythm or the arrhythmia, it, or also known as AF or AFib. So this can lead to stroke, blood clots and stroke and heart failure and other heart-related complications. So what happens during the atrial fibrillation or AFib. So normally, the heart contracts and relaxes to a regular beat. But in atrial fibrillation, the, the upper chamber of the heart or the, the atria uh, beats irregularly because not enough blood supply is being pumped out in the area or, the, or in the atria. So blood pools in the area. The pooled blood can clot, okay? With, uh, of course, that will be a dangerous um, condition if that, that will happen, okay? So if a clot form, again, it will be pumped out to the heart and to the brain. So it, it uh, goes with the circulation. So this blockage can block supply of uh, blood to the brain and again causes strokes. Okay, so um, as what I've read in the American Stroke Association, about 15 to 20 percent of people who have a stroke have a heart arrhythmia. So that is high, 15 to 20 of people who have stroke, they have this atrial fibrillation. So the clot risk is why patients with this condition are prescribed with blood thinners. So the, there will be a blood thinners in, ex, we expect that in our patient. Okay? Another? Okay. So another strategy is to reduce uh, stroke. Actually, there are many strategies or programs to reduce both at the individual and the population level. 
we have the screening for and addressing known factors, risk factors. So, of course, we already know hypertension or high blood pressure or high cholesterol, diabetes, smoking, obesity, and atrial fibrillation. These factors can be controlled or modified by lifestyle changes, okay? Such as eating a healthy diet, right? Exercising regularly so that the fatty buildup will not go further. Um, quitting smoking. Okay, is quitting smoking included the, the, the vape smoking or e-cigarette? Yes, of course. Up until now, of course, they do not know what is the exact content of that vape, but it is also included in the risk factors, okay? Another is health education. So another strategy is health education. How are we going to let the public know that uh, it is necessary to, to, to manage or reduce stroke. By educating the public, the healthcare providers about, of course, the signs and symptoms, the importance of calling your um, emergency hotlines in case a stroke will happen. And then, of course... If, if you act fast, again, we go back to the fast. If we act fast, if there is no time delay, the survival rate will increase, okay? So one way to remember the sign of stroke is to use really the fast, be fast. Face drooping again, arm, uh, weakness, speech difficulty, and time. Okay, another is the implementing policies and programs. So uh, by implementing policies and programs that promote healthy environments and behaviors, such as smoke-free laws, sodium reduction initiative, physical activity interventions, like attending to some Zumba or yoga programs in your local community that can also lead to a reduction of, of stroke, okay? This can help prevent stroke and other, of course, chronic diseases by creating, creating a supportive condition for health and wellness to the community. Another one is improving the quality and accessibility of stroke care. So in our area, do we have the facility that can address the, the concern of stroke patients in, in order not to aggravate or uh, the condition of a stroke patient or prevention of the recurrence of stroke? Do we have those? So uh, like what I've said a while ago, our government, I know that our government is really putting much effort in having programs like this. So all we have to do as future nurses is to be informed, to be aware that the facilities, the, the available programs are accessible to our um, patients and the community people. Okay. Okay, next is there. Okay, another strategy to reduce the stroke is the um, Life's Essential Eight. If you are familiar with that, is, is anyone familiar with the Life's Eight? Life's Essential Eight uh, program? Life, eight Life Essential. Mm, yeah, maybe it's quite a little bit new, but I think the content all of them are really familiar, ma'am. Annie. Yes, actually, it is really familiar because as we go along a while ago, we are already discussing these things. So yes, you are right. <laughs> with regards to the diet, we should eat a healthy diet all the time. Yeah. A healthy diet means not going to the fast food chains, 
Okay? Not drinking uh, not, not drinking a lot of uh Starbucks coffees. Right? <laughs> yes. Not and uh, a lot of a lot of I uh, I know in, in your area you have the luwak luwak uh, coffee. Yes, luwak white coffee. Yes. <laughs> so of of course there is a benefit that we get from that. However, uh as like what they've said, if it's in moderation is good, but if that is too mm -hmm. much is bad for the health, right? Oh yeah. Especially okay. The high sodium, high fats, high cholesterol diet, if that is included with the coffee, that, that will be, oh my God. Mm, yes. Another Some one is the physical, that. yeah, the, the physical activity or a person could be more active, active in the sense that they will perform uh, exercises, yogas. Or Zumba, if you want to do a Zumba, and that would be good. Walking is also one of um, the physical activity that can help reduce the risk for stroke. Okay, uh, like what I've read, uh, 75, uh, 50, 150 of a moderate or 75 minutes vigorous physical activity should be recommended for adults. So, of course, the sedentary lifestyle is not good. If you think that you are sitting in your chairs, in your offices, for a couple or, or, or for four hours, I guess you have a specific time to stretch out, stretch out your legs, mm -hmm. or uh, stand up a bit in order for you not to be... Uh, sitting for a long time another one um quitting uh tobacco or the nicotine exposure oh i jumped that okay the blood sugar actually we are already uh discussing about this a while ago uh, most of the food that we eat is turned into glucose right so our bodies use that energy if that energy cannot be consumed or cannot be um cannot be out in our system that will build up so if we eat a lot and it will it will convert into energy of course it will stay there if we will not do physical activities if we will not exercise so that's also uh one of the reason or the strategies to check or to moderate to to have the uh to have manage the blood sugar another is weight we have to manage our weight in order to achieve and maintain a healthy weight and a healthy lifestyle okay so our uh, body mass index normal is 18.5 to 25 or 23 uh by the way, I'm sorry for that because I'm I am more than that. <laughs> <laughs> However, if you can manage to, to uh lessen your weight, that would be good. However, the fasting for intermittent fasting in some cases is not recommended, especially for those who have um cardiac problems. It is not really beneficial. It will later on um have an effect on you greater effect another is the blood cholesterol okay so high cholesterol we have this bad cholesterol right cholesterol right so we all know that we need to be healthy we need to avoid high cholesterol diets so it is recommended that it in our diet especially in using oils it should not, not be trans fats. It should be olive oils. If you have, we have the means. However, in the community, we can use palm oils. Also with the canola oils. Okay? So that would be yes. included in the diet, in the, uh, the caring for patient in home. Okay? 
Another is the blood pressure. So if if you are eating too much cholesterol, of course, again, your blood pressure will expected to be elevated. But we need to manage or we need to control our blood pressures. Okay. Of again, exercising is one of the uh, the one of the benefits. Uh one benefit is that is lowers your blood pressure. Okay? And again, get a healthy sleep. Like what I've said a while ago, the average hours of sleep is uh, 7 to 9 hours. But less than or more than that cannot be uh, beneficial. It would worsen. It would increase your uh, rate or increase the potential to have a stroke, okay? Okay. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Okay. So there, let's move on with our uh, caring for uh, post-stroke at home. So how do we do that? As future nurses, we have to consider the things that we've learned, right? We need, number one is, uh, we need to collaborate with other healthcare professionals. Okay, so when you have a patient at home or when you have a post-stroke patient, Learning to, ca to care for them is a really challenging re yet rewarding experience. Why? Of course, you need to deal with which part of the body is affected. Which food am I going to give to this patient or to these uh, mem family members of mine? Right? So, mm. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> So following a stroke or uh, survivors may have a wide range of ability li limitation. Sometimes they cannot bathe themselves. They cannot even go to the bathroom. So therefore, the level, level of care to the family members and caregivers may have to provide and can vary widely. Okay? So... However, the basic of how to care for a stroke patient at home remains the same. So, assisting with their daily tasks as needed. Provide, of course, emotional uh, support. And take steps to promote recovery. So, with that, we need to collaborate with the occupational therapist, the doctors, the, the particular specialized in assessing the ability to participate in uh, the daily activities. So, of course, the occupational therapist may, be, may have a great insight here and can also uh, put back the normal ability of the muscle or the muscle tone of the patient. But if, of course, there are some of our patients that cannot or are not able to have the economy or budget to have the occupational therapies or physical therapies with them. Of course, we need to have or do on our own as nurses. At least we know on how are we going to apply the range of motions that we learn from the concepts of our nursing schools, right? We need to apply those so that the patient will benefit from that. Another one is the home modification. So stroke survivors are often at a high risk of falling due to, of course, hemiplegia, or we call this in layman's term as the weakness on the one side of the body, right? They have the balance problem or one-sided neglect because they cannot move the other part of the body. So, making home modification doesn't necessarily mean that you need to reconstruct your houses. That's not, not, that's not what I mean. You need to modify in terms that it can improve 
the patient's ability to navigate the home safely. Okay? That they can uh, walk or they can go to the bathroom on their own. Okay? By putting some non-sleep mat in the shower or bath. Okay? Non-sleep mat. Another one is installing a grab handrails in the bathroom so that if they want to sit down on the bowl, toilet bowls, they have something to hold on to or grip on to, okay? And of course, we need to remove the rugs and move around uh, the trip hazards. So if your house is a three steps higher than the road or the, the way, then you have to think it again in order for a patient to go out on their own. So maybe you can put uh, grab handrails as well outside. And another one is, uh, of course, in our home, we have a lot of cable wires, right? That lies on the floor so we need to ensure that the cable wires are out of way or they need to be fixed okay another is stabilizing a furniture or securing the wall why because if the patient wants to sit down and the chair is too short for them they might fall back or they might uh, fall down actually so if we need to give them a good chair for them to sit and relax that would be better another is uh, the patient's bed you need to consider the height of the patient's bed if it is really too high for them that it needs to have another step or ladder to get onto, then you have to think it carefully. Maybe you want to lower down the, the height of the bed for the patient to lie down. Okay? Okay, number three is the involvement. Involve patient in the plan of care for the activities of daily livings. Okay, that is really uh, necessary. Especially for us, nurses, we are, as, as a frontliners, later on, you have to uh, feed the patient. Which area are you going to feed if the right side is affected? Are you going to put the food in the right side or on the left side? Of course, on the left side. And when you prepare foods for them, it should not be the, the hard foods. It should be the foods that will easy to, fa to, shallow, to swallow, I mean. And it should be, the foods should be cut into small pieces. Okay? Do not offer a glutinous rice to a patient with have a difficulty of swallowing. Why? That can cause aspiration and that can cause uh, as well life. I uh, Actually, I have a con nurse that fed his father with a glutinous rice and then after which the father was gone due to aspiration. So it's really... It's, it's really depending on the area of the affected area wherein you can put the food inside the patient's mouth, okay? So there are some tips as well uh, to foster or to, to facilitate the feeding in patients. So let them sit right when they eat or drink. Why? Of course, because when they stoop down, when they uh, slouch on the chair, that can also um, make the food unable to 
pass on or 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 move inside and it will cause aspiration also you have to re reduce distraction so that the person can focus on eating do not talk to them while they are eating especially uh, asking them a lot of questions okay uh, and also provide drinks with a straw why because that is easier for them to drink and if you put it a, a water on a cup put a lid because it may spill and they may drown from it if in case they want to drink it with the glass or the cup okay and of course Make sure that the person or the patient gets enough calories and nutrients and water so as not to dehydrate them. You, you may use as well the protein powders or shakes to boost their intake. Another one is the uh, number four is the use of practical compensatory technique. So what do you mean by the the Practical compensatory technique. Of course, uh, in case that the patient needs to go to the bathroom, that it's far from the bedroom of the patient, what are you going to use? You need to use, of course, if you have a commode, well and good. However, if, if that is a male, you can use a urinal. And if they want to, to use the bathroom for uh, bowel movement, they can use bedpan. Those are the practical compensatory techniques that we are talking about. Especially the bladder, uh, they do not have the bladder control anymore, especially if the, the, their brain is affected. Of course, the elimination pattern also are affected, both the urinary and the bowel elimination. Okay? They're, they mm -hmm. need to have, of course, a bladder training as well. You need to, to train them on when are they going to pee or how are they going to, when are they going to urinate? And it's not dependent that in our houses, we use a urinary catheter at home, right? So it is really necessary to train them. Okay? But in some cases, other patients go home with their uh, urinary catheters with them. But as time goes of course, we need to change the catheter every two weeks for uh, infection protocol as well. So the, the best thing is to train them for the bladder training, okay? To have the, uh, another one is to, to let the, or, or to have a pelvic floor exercise, okay? Next is, the, are you familiar with the practice run? Mm, practice no. run in this, yeah, practice run means that you need to involve them in a day-to-day, day-to-day uh, -day life. Like you let them know or, or train them. Especially, uh, of course, we need the help of the occupational therapist and the physical therapist, like cutting of the foods, like uh, preparing foods for them so that they can adjust or adapt to the new normal for their uh, condition. Okay? Mm -hmm. That uh, when are they going to, to brush their teeth, we need to uh, train them as well. Okay? That is what we call the practice run. And of course, if they can have their own exercise, they have their, their physical exercise walking at home without barriers, of course, after your home modification, that would be better. Okay? Next is the preventive care. 
Preventive care is another very important component in caring for patient at home. So this means that as a caregiver or as a nurse at home, we need to ensure that their maintenance or medications are being managed or should be given or administered timely. Not like uh, my blood pressure. My blood pressure now is one hundred twenty over eighty. I will not drink the antihypertensive medication because my blood pressure is normal. No, that's not one way to prevent or the preventive care. If there's a need to drink uh, maintenance medication, they should drink it continuously or re religiously. Another one is monitoring. Uh, for any changes, like changes in their status. Is there a decrease in the sensorium of your patient? Or is there a, another late onset, signs of late onsets of stroke? And again, you have to go back to your fast signs or fast warning signs and the other signs as well. If you notice that the signs are present, then again, you have to contact the physician or call 119 immediately. Okay? Yes. Another one is uh, to take measures to prevent fall or seek medical attention if uh, fall occurs. Okay? And of course, we need to uh, promote lifestyle changes in order to um, improve the care. Like again, what we are saying a while ago about the diet of the patient. Okay. Another is encourage daily rehabilitative exercises. Again, like the, the practice run and the exercises, if they cannot afford to have the physical or occupational therapist with them, we can have we can teach them the proper way. Okay. Next is the proper use of proper communication. So a stroke can affect brain areas that affect communication. So this uh, may affect the person's ability to speak and possibility uh, and the possibility their ability to understand speech okay so you need to be uh you need to use the short or simple sentences in talking to them ask them yes or no questions rather than open ended questions or what we call the close ended questions you can even use a hand gestures and speech okay rather than talking in a long sentence you can uh make use of hand gestures so keep distractions such as background noise to a minimum level okay make sure that they understand what you are talking about enunciate the vowel sounds okay like how are you and show them your lips so that they can anticipate what is that word mean, okay? You can also use a communication board or application that allows people to point words or images. Like in your iPad or laptop, you can use that as a communication board to a patient, okay? And... Uh, when talking to them, avoid changing the topic quickly. Like right now, you are talking about, you are asking about their conditions. And then afterwards, you are uh, telling about their hobbies. So that makes confusion to your patient. Another, of course, number eight is the psychological support or emotional well-being. So when caring, of course, uh, their emotions are, uh, what you call that? They, they may be uncertain uncertainties. They may feel depressed with their conditions, yes. given that their, their bodies 
ability to move and function is not like the 100% the old self, right? So yes. we have to understand them. So when caring for them, we need to be patient. We need to be respectful, empathetic, and empowering. So patient in the sense that give time for the patient to talk what they want to talk, what, to say what they want to say, okay? Give them space to practice words. Like you want them to learn a thing. However, you are in a hurry to uh, hear what your patient wants to hear. So that is not being patient anymore, okay? Another is be respectful. So treat the person as a partner rather than a victim. In the sense that, of course, they may have impairments, but allow them to exercise their autonomy by making their own decisions. Do not decide for them because they are still alive. They can decide for themselves. Only that. Uh, other parts of their body is not functioning properly. And that's not their fault. Okay? Another is being empathetic. So, adjusting to a major life changes can bring up many emotions, of course, such as grief, anger, and anxiety for them. So, allow the person to express their feelings and, if possible, provide, of course, emotional support. Okay? Do not forget that because being an empathetic nurse uh, will really, the patient will really appreciate you if you understand how they feel, if you know their thoughts. I mean, if you understand their feelings and thoughts. Okay? Another is be empowering. So try not to focus on getting the person back to where they were before the stroke happens. Like, this is not who are you before. If they are irritable, then understand them, okay? You have to support them in finding a way forward not to go back and not to blame them for uh, what happened like it is your fault that you got stroke because of your attitude. No, that's not the point now. You have to support them to find a way to move forward, not to back to move backward. Okay? You have to understand them. So, of course, this may mean adapting new ways for a long-term movement or communication. But that's it. You can also um Ask the, the survivor or the patient to join support groups that they will be with the person with their with the same condition so that they, they have the feeling to be to belong to a certain group. Okay. And also let them do hobbies and activities that the person enjoys. If um sign of the depression develops, it is important, of course, to let the doctors know and to get advice from the health expert. Because, of course, we cannot, ano, we cannot um, judge them because they are not acting like they are previously. Of course, there is a feeling of emptiness and depression so we need to be with them for the emotional support okay okay so recovery is always possible with the help or with those strategies that we have recovery is always possible so more stroke survivors experience plateau after the first three months. However, it's not a sign that the survivor is done recovering. So there are neurological changes uh, after several months, but functional improvement are possible for a lifetime. So brain is capable of changing and healing even decades after stroke, provided that 
the support group is readily available with them. Okay? Even if progress seems to be slowing down, the recovery process is not yet over. So the recovery road is not linear to many survivors. Experience ups and downs along the way. However, of course, if individual continue to pursue recovery, the potential for improvement is always there. It is really hard to fully understand how to care for stroke patients at home before doing so. But family members and caregivers are um, encouraged to support them because by doing so, of course, that is your family member in the first place. So by doing so, by encouraging them, the best support is from the family members, right? And caring for a, a stroke patient in home is a challenging task. It entails a lot of effort. But in the end, it is uh, worthwhile. Okay? So remember, again, recovery is always possible. So I guess that's all. And these are my references. Thank you and Terry Makasi for listening for this uh, quite long talk. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Annie, for very, very insightful materials I think today regarding the topic, uh, home care for post-stroke patients. Okay, now, well, dear participants, we are coming to this question and answer session. Uh, Mrs. Annie, maybe we will try to look at the meeting chat. And please, everyone, if you have any questions to Miss Annie, you can just directly raise your hands and turn on your microphone or you want to type your question in the meeting chat. Okay, well, let me see on the meeting chat, Mrs. Yes. Annie, we have two questions here. Uh, well, Jeffira, you would like to deliver your question directly or should I read the question for you? Okay, thank you, ma'am. I will uh, speak it directly. Hello, Mrs. Annie Tekloven. Uh, good evening. I am Devira Aulia Aiza from Brody Diplomatica Keperawatan Trenggalek. I would like to ask you about a couple of uh, questions. Number one is how to deal with emotional mental challenges that arise during the recovery phase at home after experiencing a stroke. And number two is, what is the role of family and individual in providing support during home care after a stroke? Thank you very much. And let's go. Okay, thank you very much, Javira. Oh. Well, Miss Anne, uh, question number one regarding the how to deal with the emotional yes. mental challenges uh, during the recovery yes. phase. Um, Maybe so you want just to... like what, yes, uh, thank you for that very uh, good question, uh, Devera. And uh, uh, number one, yes, how to deal with emotional mental challenges that arise during the recovery phase. So just like what I've said a while ago, uh, emotional support for the family is much needed, right? But of course, in order for the patient not to get depressed or they feel sad or lonely, the family support is very crucial. So we need to, again, be patient with them, understand where they are coming from. And, of course, uh, a physical um, exhaustion may be for for the part of the family members caring for them. But of course, 
as a caregiver, we need to balance our time in order not to be exhausted as well in caring for them because it really entails a lot of effort, emotionally and physically draining, okay? So we need to be there, be patient, be empathetic, okay? And we need to empower each other, not only to the patient because if you are willing, yes, if you are willing to care for that patient, however, the patient doesn't have the will, that, that will be a different question already, right? So we need to empower each other. Okay. okay? And that is, so... that is, I guess, one of uh, or included in the, the family role. Uh, for us in the Philippines, we have this. A close family ties that we call that sometimes we really think that it is our duty and obligation if your family member suffers for certain case, a case like that, we need to be with them. So I guess that's also one of the attributes that a family should have in providing support during or after uh, the stroke, okay? Okay. I guess uh, I answered your question, right? Uh, yes. Devira, what do you think? It is, uh, is it answering your question? Uh, okay. Uh, excuse me, Miss Anna, let me maybe It's in my you your... Yeah. Yes, silakan, Bu Rahayu. Uh, dari pertanyaan Devira tadi, saya uh, berpikir bahwa ini bukan hanya jawaban untuk Devira, sehingga mungkin bisa Bu Yun simpulkan sedikit gitu intinya apa ke dalam bahasa Indonesia, supaya yang lainnya juga bisa, ya bukan berarti tidak ngerti ya, tapi untuk memastikan gitu aja. Terima kasih. Yes. Ini akan saya uh, translatekan ini tadi. <laughs> Terima kasih. Excuse me, Miss Anne. Uh, let me summarize yes, your answer in Indonesia because I, okay. maybe, uh, yeah, maybe because uh, we we need to explain clearly as much as possible. I think about the answer. Teman-teman berkaitan dengan jawaban dari pertanyaan Devira, yaitu bagaimana sebenarnya cara kita untuk uh, mengatasi begitu terkait dengan tantangan emosional dan juga mental yang muncul ketika proses uh, home care untuk pasien stroke atau perawatan pasien stroke yang di rumah. Jadi menurut Mrs. Ane itu, hal yang terpenting sebagaimana yang tadi disampaikan di terakhir itu poin nomor 8 itu, sebagai keluarga kita harus uh, saling mendukung terhadap uh, memberikan support begitu dukungan kepada pasiennya harus uh, yang merawat juga harus memiliki kesabaran yang luar biasa, kemudian memiliki empati, kemudian tadi beberapa sudah saya uh, terjemahkan dalam bahasa Indonesia menghargai begitu memahami bagaimana memperlakukan pasien stroke di rumah, kemudian saling memberdayakan antar anggota keluarga ketika merawat pasien stroke di rumah gitu. Kemudian yang lebih terpenting lagi adalah tidak hanya menjaga emosi dan mental dari pasiennya tetapi juga menjaga emosi dan mental dari yang merawat pasien stroke yang ada di rumah tersebut. Jadi seluruh anggota keluarga, keluarga itu harus saling hmm, mensupport begitu, sehingga yang merawat pasien di rumah itu juga terjaga kesehatan mentalnya dan kesehatan emosionalnya. Tidak uh, kemudian yang nungguin atau yang merawat itu malah menjadi jatuh sakit begitu tidak sampai seperti itu. Dan dengan cara memahami berbagai uh, mulai dari efek penyakit struknya, kemudian jenis penyakit struknya, kemudian strategi apa yang dilakukan ketika harus di rumah. Misalnya tadi adalah terkait dengan makanan yang harus dikonsumsi oleh pasien struk, harus dipotong kecil-kecil begitu, kemudian tidak diajak ngobrol ketika makan, kemudian harus menggunakan, kalau pas ngobrol harus menggunakan kalimat-kalimat yang sederhana, yang singkat, tidak panjang-panjang, kemudian tidak banyak memberikan petuah nasihat yang, yang nadanya mungkin uh, apa ya nadanya 
menjustifikasi begitu atau mungkin sambil marah-marah begitu kalimat-kalimatnya harus e, dengan kalimat-kalimat yang lebih bisa diterima oleh pasien. Jadi kuncinya tadi ada empat di nomor delapan, bersabar, yang merawat, bersabar, menghargai, berempati, dan memberdayakan. Be patient, be respectful, be empathic, and be empowering. Mungkin itu untuk pertanyaan nomor satu. Uh, thank you very much, Miss Anne. Now, please, you can answer the question number two regarding the uh, the role of the family and individuals in providing support during home care after a stroke. Okay, so the number two, what is the role of the of family and individuals in providing support during home care after stroke? So uh, in connection with the answer from the previous question, of course, it is really uh, the number one is we need to understand the effects of the stroke. As a family member, we need to know what are the things that... Uh, what is being affected so from there we start supporting our patient okay so if we do not know which part is affected of course it is difficult for us to intervene right and assess the patient as well um what are the the capabilities or what are the the patient's ability in the certain um condition now with regards to the the emo the providing support okay if in that is emotional you have to like what we've said a while ago we need to be um, more caring more patient and another is uh, proper communication, maybe open communication to each other in order to understand each other. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so the jadi uh, let me translate in Bahasa Indonesia ya, Miss yes. Anne. I'm sorry. Uh, well, yes, jadi okay. jadi peran keluarga di sini peran keluarga. Uh, dan juga masing-masing di sekitarnya mungkin dalam memberikan dukungan di, untuk home care pada pasien stroke ini di rumah. Jadi kuncinya adalah more caring. Harus lebih ngomong, lebih bisa ngopeni begitu maksudnya. Kemudian more patient, lebih bisa bersabar lagi. Artinya sabarnya harus double-double, mungkin triple-triple begitu teman-teman. Uh, Dan yang terakhir adalah more understanding. Harus lebih bisa memahami bahwa yang sakit ini memang membutuhkan kita yang sehat begitu. Bahwa yang sakit ini tuh membutuhkan dukungan kita, bantuan kita mulai dari tadi hal-hal yang sangat basic, seperti misalnya urinary proses ya, ketika harus ke kamar mandi buang air kecil atau mungkin tidak bisa bahkan ke kamar mandi kemudian uh, mandi dan sebagainya kemudian bahkan uh, menyikat gigi tadi kalau nggak salah juga disampaikan oleh Miss Ane kemudian terutama banyak hal yang harus dipelajari oleh keluarga dalam merawat pasien stroke di rumah termasuk belajar harus dilatih oleh perawat sebelum nanti uh, pasien ini ke rumah keluarganya harus juga diberi pelatihan terkait bagaimana merawat pasien di rumah kemudian mengganti kateter dan sebagainya tadi harus tidaknya diberikan uh, edukasi artinya edukasi tidak hanya bagi pasiennya tetapi edukasinya juga diberikan kepada keluarga atau orang sekitar yang nanti akan merawat pasien tersebut di rumah oke okay. I think maybe that's all uh, to sum up the answer from Miss Anne. Uh, is it answering your question, Devira? And also maybe others, yang mungkin teman-teman lainnya memiliki pertanyaan yang sama. Uh, okay, well, uh, well, uh, dear participants, maybe you have another question. You can uh, directly deliver your question. Maybe we have one more question, I think. from Bapak Ibu maybe uh, while waiting for the uh, one question 
Miss mm, Anne, I would like to uh, give ask for your confirmation about the this one. You okay, said that we have a caring for post stroke. Uh, we have some. I, I think the strategies for caring for post stroke patient at home. Number two, uh, yes. the item number two about home modification. Yes, home modification. Is it? Uh, I mean this one. Maybe uh, some of the background of the family maybe not coming from, maybe we, uh, they have different uh, social status, I think. Or maybe uh, an economical status, I think, different. Yes. So how to deal with this one? Because I think when the patient at home cannot walk, for example, cannot go to the bathroom by himself or herself, and then we have to modify our house or our home to be more friendly for the patient stroke, uh, how to deal with this, with this, I think? Okay, so when we say home modification, that will... Um, let's start looking for the financial status first of the yes. affected uh, family or the patient. If they can afford, yes, they can modify. They can put some, uh, what is this, holder in their bathroom. Yes. They can remove their their step um, mm -hmm. stool or um, maybe they can buy... Uh, some commode like what I've said a while ago they can uh, instead of modifying their whole house only a certain portion like put a certain area or or room for that patient to be cared like mm -hmm. you put everything the things that you need there like mm -hmm. the bedpan the mm -hmm. urinal or mm -hmm. if they don't have the urinal, if it's in the um, far-flung areas, we, they mm -hmm. can use a bottle, a, a mm -hmm. certain, like, soda bottle, Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. for instance. They will cut okay. that just, just to, to be, you know, nursing is an art. So let's apply <laughs> being, being, like, resourceful in some ways uh, okay, to modify things. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have a lot of uh, problems, for example, in incontinence, in urination. If the family cannot buy diapers or I don't know yeah. what you call that in your area, pampers or the underpad, you can use your old linens instead or old clothes instead to put on, on the the top of the bed of your patient mm -hmm. and put some plastic underneath that. You can tape mm -hmm. that. That's the additional, uh, what do you call this? Being resourceful of an yeah. okay. Some alternatives, something like that, that maybe yes, is it, uh, very affordable or maybe is it very easy to put, easy to use, something like that. Not yes, always in a costly things, something like that. Okay, thank yes, you very much. Uh, jadi untuk modifikasi rumah disesuaikan saja dengan uh, budget yang ada bisa memanfaatkan hal-hal yang lebih murah dan terjangkau seperti itu uh, bagi pasien-pasien stroke yang mengalami, yang harus perawatan pasien stroke di rumah yang memiliki disabilitas tidak bisa melakukan aktivitas sendiri dengan cara memberikan pegangan di sekitar kamar menuju kamar mandi atau kemudian nanti tempat BAK dan BAB-nya diubah uh, menjadi lebih mudah bagi pasien stroke. Thank you very much for your explanation. Well, uh, Miss Annie, we have uh, one a raise hand here Ibu Rahayu would yes, you please turn on your microphone okay. terima kasih Bu Yuyun uh, jadi tadi sudah dijelaskan uh, terkait dengan apa yang harus di uh, bisa dilakukan oleh keluarga manakala di keluarga tersebut ada yang menderita stroke post stroke gitu ya nah beberapa tadi disampaikan salah satunya adalah memberikan semacam edukasi. Nah, ini apakah uh, pelaksanaannya dilaksanakan eduk artinya pembelajaran atau penyuluhan atau edukasi yang diberikan kepada keluarga itu dilaksanakan ketika 
pasien masih dirawat di rumah sakit? Ataukah memang ada semacam organisasi khusus di sana di Filipina misalnya ada komunitas yang me, apa ya? yang menyediakan fasilitas memberikan pelatihan kepada keluarga yang anggotanya ada yang sakit stroke. Itu yang pertama. Kemudian yang kedua, manakala nanti di keluarga itu ada yang menderita stroke, tidak menutup kemungkinan keluarga tersebut membutuhkan bantuan dari tenaga kesehatan. Nah, apakah di sana juga sudah terorganisir, artinya harus menghubungi siapa ketika membutuhkan tenaga kesehatan itu, ataukah memang ya harus upaya sendiri, langsung dibawalah ke rumah sakit, kalau di sini misalnya bisa minta tolong ke 119, apakah di sana sudah ada semacam ya organisasi secara khusus yang memberikan pelayanan kepada keluarga di mana salah satu anggotanya menderita stroke. Itu Bu Yun, terima kasih. Okay, thank you, Bu Rahayu. Uh, well, Miss Anne, Bu Rahayu has two questions, I think. Number one is, she asked about uh, the technical, the techniques about how to give health education. The technique, the strategies to give health education to the family of the stroke patient. If uh, whether the health education is given at the time in the hospital before they before the patient discharge from the hospital, or maybe there is one of the uh, community maybe or organization focusing on uh, giving uh, home care that they. can go to the patient house and then they give the health education to the family in philippines okay, thank you for that yeah ah, especially yes. how in philippines practically in philippines yes how, uh, okay Okay, uh, with all honesty ma, we don't have any organization to address those uh, health education programs or or conducting as an organization body conducting or uh, health education program intended for uh, post-stroke patients. What we do is during the confinement of a certain patient, the family will be involved in the care inside the hospital. So uh, before the transport or before the discharge, the patient or the fam- patient's family should be evaluated if they know especially if they knows how to uh feed the patient through ngt mm. if necessary how mm-hmm. they will prepare the medi- the the foods through blenderized or, or osteoized mm. feeding before the discharge as well okay. as taking care like bathing the patient before mm-hmm. discharge that is mm-hmm. done by the nurse in the hospital mm-hmm. prior mm-hmm. discharge okay i see uh, ibu rahayu untuk pertanyaan pertama jadi kalau di filipina tidak ada komunitas atau organisasi yang biasanya memberikan pelayanan edukasi informasi kesehatan ke rumah rumah uh, ke rumah atau khususnya kepada keluarga pasien karena biasanya edukasi kesehatannya itu diberikan sebelum pasien keluar dari rumah sakit Jadi setiap uh, keluarga itu diberikan edukasi tentang misalnya bagaimana cara mas, uh, memberian makan lewat NGT, kemudian ya. cara membe- uh, cara memberikan uh, makan yang benar kalau pada pasien stroke begitu. Jadi sama dengan di sini. Ya, yeah. oke. Okay. I hope it is uh, quite satisfying your question, ma'am. Is it answering is your it, question? Is it Burahayu? the same in in Indonesia? Ah uh, yes, is it, it it is the same as in Indonesia, Miss Anne. <laughs> okay, now the actually we question. are actually we are proposing for the the masters in masters education program to have that certain program, ma'am. Actually, uh, we are proposing that that they will uh, come up with a certain group of the uh, private duty nurses to come mm-hmm. up with that. program however hmm. until now it's not being implemented oke okay, masih dalam proses pengusulan program-program yang seperti itu Ibu Rahayu pertanyaan yang kedua the second question Miss Anne maybe this is the last question for this, uh, today okay. international guest lecture uh, Bu Rahayu asked for about uh, 
whether the healthcare providers may be um, on call duty. I mean, when the patient needs help from the healthcare provider, the healthcare provider will be directly uh, visiting the patient at home, or maybe the patient has to visit the hospital again when they have a problem in uh, caring at home, something like that. Or maybe, but, uh, I think uh, the second question that there is no community or organization in Philippines to give yes. uh, service yeah, uh, for home care service, I think. So what about the healthcare providers uh, in the hospital? Are they giving a uh, on-call service, something like that? Maybe when uh, the patient at home has some has some problems regarding the home care can they call yes. back maybe or something like that yes ma'am actually before the discharge of the patient the nurses will give the doctor's information or the doctor's contact number that in case mm -hmm. there will be a problem at home, mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. contact the doctor and then they will instruct the, the patient or the patient's relative to mm -hmm. whether visit the clinic or to go to the hospital directly. If in mm -hmm. case that the patient have the NGT and they accidentally pulled that out, mm -hmm. In, in some hospitals here in Tugigaraw, we are um, going to patients' house just to insert the, mm -hmm. the NGT, provided okay. that there is no other problem, only the NGT insertion. If there is a medical condition, of course, they need to go directly to the hospital. Oh, Oke, okay, I see. Uh, jadi Bu Rahayu, yes, kalau terkait karena tadi sudah jelaskan, dia tidak ada organisasi atau komunitas yang memberikan layanan di rumah. Jadi jika mungkin ada permasalahan pasien stroke di rumah, bisa menghubungi nomor dokter yang sudah diberikan. Nanti bisa uh, disarankan untuk kembali ke layanan kesehatan jika ada permasalahan yang timbul seperti uh, yang muncul sebagai bentuk komplikasi dari Uh, stroke-nya atau jika hanya misalnya NGT-nya lepas begitu nanti pegawai uh, petugas kesehatan bisa datang ke rumah tetapi itu pun hanya untuk mem, me, istilahnya membetulkan kembali letak NGT-nya supaya kembali seperti saat dipasang itu saja jadi tidak memberikan perawatan yang lainnya sebagai bentuk komplikasi jika ada problem masalah komplikasi lainnya harus segera dibawa kembali ke rumah sakit Mungkin begitu, Bu Rahayu. Oke, okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Miss Anibu. Very, very uh, nice and insightful uh, guest lecture today. I think we have uh, we have got lots of information from you regarding the topic home care for post-stroke patients. One more thing that I would like to remind you on the meeting chat, I have already sent the link for attendance list for oh. The participants and also for you miss anne please uh would you like to fill the form out and then we have okay to, uh, yes okay i have already said yes thank you so much once again thank you very much for very very nice materials today and i would like to sum up our material uh, izinkan untuk uh, i would like to sum up in bahasa indonesia miss anne uh, yes, yes uh, go ahead semua. Kesimpulan dari materi hari ini adalah kita sudah mempelajari beberapa hal. Yang pertama yaitu tentang efek dari penyakit stroke pada pasien stroke. Kemudian tadi sudah dijelaskan juga tentang tipe-tipe stroke ada hemorrhagic dan ischemic stroke. Kemudian dijelaskan juga tentang warning signs and symptoms, tanda dan gejala stroke sampai menggunakan teknik FAST bahkan BFAST untuk mengetahui lebih dini terkait dengan penyakit stroke, kemudian the risk factors, faktor-faktor yang berisiko terkena stroke, kemudian the strategies to reduce stroke, strategi untuk mencegah atau mengurangi stroke, mulai dari screening, health education, implementing policies, improving quality and accessibility. And then uh, the most important one is How to care for post-stroke at home, pertama kolaborasi dengan petugas kesehatan, memodifikasi rumah, kalau tidak bisa rumah mungkin ruangan bagi pasien stroke, tadi sudah disampaikan juga terkait dengan dana yang dimiliki, 
keuangan yang dimiliki. Kemudian yang ketiga, melibatkan pasien dalam perencanaan perawatan sehari-hari terkait dengan mulai dari makanan yang dikonsumsi, kemudian eh, perawatannya dengan basic-basic yang dibutuhkan oleh pasien, seperti itu, pasien harus diajak dalam berdiskusi terkait perawatannya, kemudian menggunakan teknik kompensatori yang praktis, perawatan pencegahan, mendorong latihan rehabilitasi sehari-hari dibantu dengan dukungan keluarga, kemudian berikutnya adalah uh, menggunakan komunikasi yang baik saat berbicara atau berkomunikasi dengan pasien post-truk, dan yang terakhir, Uh, ketika merawat uh, pasien stroke di rumah harus be patient, bersabar banyak-banyak sabar, be respectful, be empathic, and then be empowering. Uh, well, uh, I think that solve a very, uh, a very uh, insightful international guest lecture today. Thank you very much for your attention, dear participants and Bapak Ibu. Now the time, let me give it back to the master of ceremony. Devira, the screen is yours. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Yu Yun. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the guest lecture today. We hope that we found everything useful to add up and upgrade our knowledge regarding the home care after a stroke. Last but not least, special thanks goes to the keynote speaker and all participants today. Well, Ladies and gentlemen and dearest participants, thank you so much for your attention. Bye for now and see you in the next program. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <laughs> thank you very much, Miss Anne. Maybe we can uh, sharing again next time in the future. Thank you very much, Papa. Ibu. Yes, thank you very much for this opportunity you gave me. And it was nice uh, being with you and having me with you today. Thank Once again, thank you so much, Ma'am, uh, for the, the head, Ma'am Rahayu. And of course, Ma'am Yuyun Potri, thank you so much. And Ms. Devra, thank you very much. And My to pleasure. the participants as well, thank you. Yes. See you, Miss Annie, and it's really nice to meet you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. If you want to leave the Zoom meeting, yes, please do. Okay, thank you.